What's up guys? Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about 10 tips that can help you modeling cabinets inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so tip one is only model what you need. And this is really something that you should be doing with any kind of SketchUp model. But for example, if you look at these two models, right, they're both cabinets that are created inside of SketchUp. So this one over here was created with a cabinet making extension. This one is one that I modeled myself. And you can see how the one on the left has a lot of detail. It has like detail of the drawers and how they're made, um, as well as the interior shelves and the different parts and pieces that make up this cabinet. And that's fine if you need to show the way the cabinet is constructed. However, if you're just gonna show a kitchen, or something like that, and you're gonna have a cabinet like this in here, there's no reason to model out all of this stuff on the interior. So if you're only going to be showing a kitchen, then I recommend just modeling this out as a simple box with doors on the face. You're gonna get the same result with a lot less work. All right, so tip number two is when you model your cabinets, model your box, and then model your front door. So what I mean by that is let's say that we wanted to create a cabinet like this one. So I've just drawn out this shape that has the general dimensions of my cabinet, but all I'm gonna do in order to finish this off is I'm just gonna extrude this up to this height, and then I'm gonna draw the toe kick, and we'll push pull it back. And this will go back maybe like three inches or something like that. But then from here, instead of like hollowing this out and making everything really complicated, a lot of the time what I do is I'll just triple click on this and then right click in order to group it. And then I'll just draw a cabinet door right on top of it. So I'll just come in here, draw this door, and then extrude it out maybe like three quarters of an inch. And then I'll just use the offset tool to offset this in in order to create my detail. And then I'll just push pull this in in order to create my profile. So now what I have is I have a cabinet with a door on the face. Well then I'll just take that door and I'll right click and I'll make it a component. And that's the next tip is use components for repeating geometry. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna model out this door. Well, I wanna right click and I wanna make this a component because I'm gonna copy it for the other door instead of remodeling that again. And we'll just call this cabinet front door and we'll hit the enter key. And so now that's been created as a component. So instead of me remodeling this again over here, I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. So tap the M key, single click, then tap the control key to create a copy. That is gonna give me a second copy of my door. And then if I come in here and I make any changes, so for example, let's say that this got scaled in or something like that. So if I made any changes, notice how those changes are being um, reflected across this other copy right here. And so the next tip is if you're gonna be doing any kind of rendering or really spitting out any kind of images that don't have a lot of the edges in here, leave gaps in places where gaps would be in real life. So for example, if you were to render this out, you just get a smooth surface because there's no gap in here. There's nowhere for the light to go. And so it starts looking really kind of uniform and not very good. So all we would do to change this is we would just double click in here and notice how I'm editing just one of these, but I would just push pull this by maybe like a 16th of an inch. So it doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to create a gap right here. And one thing you might've noticed is this also moved on the other side over here. So there's a few different things you could do about this. In this case, I'm just gonna select it, tap the S key and then hold control. And I'm just gonna flip this in place. So I'm just gonna flip it to negative one. So then what I have is I have a cabinet door, which I can align right here that actually has a gap in here that'll show up if I render. You might do the same thing with your door by moving it like a 16th of an inch off of this face. It really kind of depends on what you're doing, but those gaps are gonna really add to your realism in a rendering image. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about our model organization. So this is gonna get really important when we start dealing with materials, but for now, let's talk about how to organize this object. So right now you can see how, first of all, always use the outliner to keep things organized. So the outliner is a great tool for seeing what's inside of your groups in your model. You can see how right now I have objects in here for my cabinet front doors and then my box, which I'm gonna go ahead and rename cabinet box. 
like this. And let's say we had some hardware that we wanted to put in here as well. So I'm just gonna move this hardware over here for simplicity's sake. And let's say that we had this hardware in here. And so now we've got all these different objects inside of SketchUp. Well, they're all in there as individual objects, which can be really kind of problematic. And so what I recommend is I recommend organizing these by selecting them all and putting them in a group. So I can just select them, right click and click on make group. And we could call this something like cabinet 30 inches wide two door or something like that. And honestly, you probably don't even want to make it a group. You probably want to right click on it and make it a component because you're probably going to reuse it, right? So we're just going to um, right click to make component and we're just going to call this or give it a definition of the name we already gave it. So we're going to click on create right here. That way, if you start creating multiple different copies in here, you can manage all of them using the outliner. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a few copies in order to quickly create kind of a kitchen space like this. And so let's say we wanted to apply materials to all of these. Well, what we can do is you could either apply this to the outside of the group, which can cause some weird things with rendering engines. So maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you do. Um, but notice how if these are all instances of the same component, if I come in here and I apply a material, to the inside of this group, right? So to these individual faces. So if I do a control A, and let's say I just apply maybe this like wood veneer material right here. Well, notice how because these are copies of components, the materials are going to change when I apply that material. So I can come in here and do the same thing with one of my doors. Because my doors are copies of the same component, that material is going to apply across all of these. So if you come in here and actually apply that material to the inside, like directly on the faces in here, then that's going to make changing your materials really easy when you're dealing with copies of objects. All right, so another tip is model your tops separately. So you've probably already figured this out because we haven't modeled out the countertops yet. But usually what I'll do is I'll place the boxes in here and then I'll model out the countertops after the fact um, because you don't necessarily know what your configuration is. A lot of the time it's just a little bit easier to model that out just by doing something simple like drawing a box on the top or something like that with a little bit of an overhang and then push pulling it right here. So when you push pull that up, notice how modeling that top is really easy. And then you can just take it and you can group it separately from this, or you could put them both in the group as well. So if you wanted to do that, you could just rename this uh, countertop. But then if you wanted to, you could just drag that into this group in the outliner, or you could also just select that's probably going to be the easiest way is just to drag that into your cabinets group in the outliner. So now these are all grouped together. So another tip for your countertops is come in here and add a little bit of a bevel to the front side. So this is very square. Um, and so when it's square, you just lose a little bit of realism in here. So a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll just draw an arc, but um, I'll tap the A key and then I'll type in maybe like three or four sides. So I'll just type in four and hit the enter key. I don't necessarily need a super high polygon edge coming across here. Like I don't need to create a ton of faces when I do this, just enough that I get kind of this like curved look in here. And so when I get this curved look in here, when I use the push pull tool to remove that material, you can see on my countertop's just gonna look a lot better than it did before. So, and then the tip that I probably use the most is just download what you need. Um, so you can definitely model your cabinets, but let's say you wanna use like Craftmade or something like that. You can just go into the 3D warehouse and just look for Craftmade cabinet. So Craftmade cabinet. And so if you just click on one of these Craftmade models and go to see more details, you can actually click on Craftmade and you can actually see what they have in here. So a lot of companies actually have their pre-made cabinet lines in here. So you can just download those instead. So usually I go to the collections and then you can find their different types in here. So for example, uh, let's go with maybe these Ardmore vanity cabinets but you can find these in here and you can just click and download them instead of you having to model them out themselves. So it's already got like 
It's already got hardware on here. You can see how they've done a really good job of modeling out the actual profiles there would. So they've actually got a cabinet in here so you don't have to do that yourself. So that's another easy way to do this is just download what you need instead of wasting time modeling it yourself. I can't remember, some of these are dynamic components too. So if you right click in here and go to your component options, you can actually adjust the model so for example, um, I could get this like 48 inch wide one and just click on apply. Notice how this is going to adjust so that it's now that model. So if you can find a manufacturer model that's dynamic, that's probably gonna save you a lot of time and I would really recommend giving that a try as well. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, let me know what your cabinet tips are for SketchUp. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.